In today's show, we're going to talk about Power Apps bulk updating and why you probably shouldn't be doing it the way you're doing it. Right? We're all guilty of trying to have Power Apps write a bunch of records, tens, hundreds of records all at once, and we do it with four alls or other patch methods. Today, what we're going to learn about is how to do it with flow and be much more efficient. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. And today, we're going to talk about Power Apps bulk updates and why you probably shouldn't be doing them because, quite frankly, you're probably doing them in the slowest, most inefficient way possible. Could it be my fault? Maybe I showed you the video that kind of got you down that path. Maybe I might take a little bit of the blame. So what we're going to do today is we're going to walk you through a new way to do bulk updates from Power Apps. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to take it and we're going to pass the data over to Flow and let Flow do it, right? This is something Microsoft's been harping on me for four or five years now, you know, is I have this tendency, I love Power Apps, I'm a Power Apps first person, so I have this tendency to do everything in Power Apps when sometimes bulk operations, especially flow is more efficient at that so my users don't have to wait. So that's what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna teach you how to do that. Cool, all right, well, let's switch over to my desktop and take a look. All right, so over here on my desktop, real quick, I've built an app and so what we're going to do here is we're going to say, hey, we're going to, we're going to race. We have two different methods, race first and show you kind of the difference in speed. And so I'm going to say, hey, I want to create 100 records over in my SharePoint list. This would be the same with any data source, right? This is a bulk operation, regardless if it's bulk operation with SharePoint, bulk operation with Dataverse, bulk operation with SQL, it wouldn't matter. So we're going to say set it to 100. We're going to create a collection and a collection because that's really where we're going to get the bulk data from is these two collections. And so then now I'm going to say create that with flow. Let's repress this and the little timer runs and you're going to see that in about one second, and honestly that's about the slowest I've seen this take, but it took one second to make that over in flow, right? So all it really did was package the data up from Power Apps, send it to flow, flow process the data. But my user didn't have to wait back in the app because flow's doing it and they don't have to wait on any of that to happen. Whereas this other one, so collect for patch, we're going to use the patch method and we're using the most efficient pass method pro uh, possible. And I'll show you that method in just a second. We did a whole video on that. I'll also link to when I show it to you, but we're using the fastest way I could do it from the power app. So we're going to say create with patch and you're going to see the timer takes off and like it's, it got so angry that it ended up taking three seconds, like power apps loading spinner came up. That's how angry it got. So, this is one of those things like if you're only doing 10 records, their times are very, very similar, but the bigger you get, you know, the flow times stay pretty consistent. The sending it with patch is difficult. And so how did I do this? Well, so let's just talk about the patch method that is, I'm telling you is too slow. So I documented right here on the screen for you, the for all method that is infinitely slower than what we just did. I don't even know that might've taken 10 seconds to go. So please, you know, we're not using that one. Remember, there's a video up there that talks about patch performance. So if you don't understand the difference between that and what I'm about to show you, then watch that video. Um, but what we're doing here is we're saying patch employees is the name of our data source. And then we're sending it a collection. And so basically, as long as your collection matches the data source, so it has the same columns and all the required columns, and they're all the same data types, then it will just do one big bulk transaction to update all that data for you. So this is what we're using. This is what we're comparing it to. Um, you might have also seen this written as collect employees, coal stuff patch. That runs about the same efficiency as patch, but we kind of think this patch way is the slightly fastest way. So I wanted to give Power Apps the best opportunity. Okay, so this is what not to do, but I want you to see what we are not doing there and what took three seconds to update. So instead, what we're going to look at here is we're going to see that, you know, create with flow, so what we're doing is we're actually going to build ourselves and we're going to build a flow from scratch in just a second. But what we did was we said, we're going to take our collection, right? So that same exact collection we just used with patch. We're going to uh, JSON encode that, which really just means turns it into, you know, um, all the little squigglies, all the fun little JSON, um, you know, hipster way of doing it thing. And so we're then just going to send that one big bulk object to JSON over to flow and then Power Apps is done, right? The user can get back to doing what they were doing. The user does not have to wait. So then Flow goes and loops through the hundred items or the thousand items or the dozens of items, whatever you've given it. Flow loops through those and updates it, but your user doesn't have to wait. And that's the beauty of this method. So whether you're doing a bulk update, like we're going to teach you how to do here, maybe if you're doing some type of bulk delete, instead of having Power Apps do it and your user wait, 
toss it over the fence. Let flow do it. This idea of running bulk operations and flow is just something we don't embrace enough. So remember, bulk patching, meh. Bulk, send it to flow, let flow do its jam, good. Okay? The other pieces you see here, like so resetting my timer, uh, starting this variable, stopping this variable, collecting the run, all of that is just the mechanics for all my timing. So that, that way, you know, if we hit play, and let's just do another, let's do like 10. So we say create with flow. I was giving myself a way to law, oh, I, oops, it did the 100 again, right? So let's do it again. So if we do 10, there you go, 253 milliseconds. Click for patch here, create with patch. So there you go, so it's doing 10. Um, but so this is giving us a, a way to kind of see how these bulk operations are running. All of these mechanics are available. Um, I'll make the app available to download if you're a subscriber over at training.powerapps91.com, right? All my apps are available over there. Um, and so if you want to work that mechanics, we're not going to talk about that here. Okay, I've rambled enough. Let's build a flow to do this thing, All right? So to build our flow, what we're going to do, we'll just, let's just start ourselves on a new screen, make this super easy for us. So new screen, blank. And so over here on our new screen, the first thing we need to do is create a collection that's going to have the data columns we want. So we'll insert ourselves button. And then we're going to say something like this. We're going to say clear collect, call video. And so then we're going to set out the, the pattern, right? So we're just going to say, have a, um, column called my title, right? And I'm going to use different names just so you can kind of more easily see them. And we're going to set the title to um, record one. I know, very creative. And then we're going to uh, go right here and we're just going to set the first name column as well. So we'll say my FN, FN for first name. And then we're just going to set that to be um, buddy. Like that and like that. So that would create a collection with one record. We'll just put two records in here just to give ourselves a little bit more. So I'll just copy this, right? Remember, fail fast. So there's no reason to test with 100 records or 1,000 records. If it works with two records, it'll work with 100 records, right? And so instead of buddy, we'll call this one um, Winston. So that will create a collection, as you know, press the button. I'm holding down the Alt key to press the button. And then Cold Video now has two rows, okay? Easy enough. So now we've got the collection in place. Let's start building the flow to go with that. So we're going to go over here to the left. We're going to click on the Power Automate, and we're going to say Add a Flow. We're going to say Create a New Flow. And then this is going to load up. We're going to ignore all the templates. We're just going to say Create from Blank. And after a second, this loads up. And so now what do we want to do? So the first step here is going to be a new step. And then we're going to do a Compose, right? We're going to have to kind of build this. When you go through this process, it has to be a little bit baby steps. So we're going to do a Compose. And then for the Compose, what I want you to do is put your cursor in there and I want you to say Ask in Power Apps. So we're going to ask Power Apps for that uh, JSON collection so we can parse it over here. So we're going to say Ask in Power Apps, just like that. We will call this Video Bulk Upload. And we'll even spell video correctly, why not? And then we'll say Save. And so this is going to save it and then kick us back over to Power Apps. One sec. All right, after a few seconds, that is loaded up. Right, so there it is, video bulk upload. So let's just throw another button in here. And so what do we want to do here? We're going to say video bulk upload dot run. And now it's like, hey, what do you want to send me? So you can't just straight send it the collection. What you have to do is JSON encode the collection. So we're going to do JSON and then our collection name. So what do you call it? Cole video. There you go. And then you need to do the um JSON format, and it is called ident4, right? This is just going to space it out the way that makes flow nice and happy. So we're going to close that parenthesis, close that parenthesis. So there you go. So now that's it. So we can just hold down the Alt key and run the flow. That is sending that data over there. Now we know that our flow doesn't have a lot going on yet, but that's okay. So now we're just going to say edit our flow. And personally, if the back and forth with flow gets tiresome, which I think it does for me, um, what I would tell you is that instead of doing this edit with flow, what we're going to actually do is we're just going to close this back up, go back, and then we're just going to go over to regular flow and then go to my flows and find our flow, right? This is going to be a much more natural feeling when you're trying to kind of go back and forth. That method inside of Power Apps, this doesn't work great. I mean, it works great. It, it's, it's cumbersome in these scenarios because what I really want you to do is click on the flow. There it is. And then you see the run history. 
you're going to click into here. And then what I want you to do is you need to get the JSON, All right? So as soon as this opens, we'll click on the compose and you see in the inputs there, there is the encoded JSON that we sent over. Let's put your cursor in there, say control A, control C, go back over to, uh, or no, stay here in flow. Don't go anywhere. Stay here in flow, hit edit. And so now that we have the raw JSON, we can parse it, right? We need to break it into its individual components. And so in order to do that, we're going to add the parse JSON action. One sec. Flow is being super slow. It's angry at me for saying the other way wasn't the right way. <laughs> Get over it, Flow. All right, so new step. We'll then search for parse. Parse JSON. And so for your content, this is going to be the compose inputs. Remember, that was the, where we asked in Power App. Right, so remember, right, whatever's there for you is what would go here as well. So we'll put that in there. And then for the schema, we could type it out manually. No one wants to do that. What I want you instead to do is say generate from sample, right? We're lazy. It's okay. We're going to paste this in there. We don't even have to look. Like if you don't understand what's happening, just close your eyes. Eh, I've done that before. You'll say done. You might have to open your eyes, hit the done button. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe better than me. But there you go. It put a bunch of JSON stuff over here. Who knows? Who cares? We don't care, right? But what that'll do is that'll break it down into individual pieces. So in a second, we'll use the dynamic content. We're going to be able to reference my FN and my title. Now we need to add new steps, right? So we're going to add a new step. And so what you want to do is you want to create an item. So we're going to say create. And so you would do this in any of your data sources. So whether you're using SharePoint, SQL, Dataverse, Excel, Hopscotch, I don't know, whatever your data source is, you would do your create operation here. So for me, we're going to use SharePoint, but once again, it would not matter at this point. So then now I'm going to choose my sites. I'm going to choose my list. And then now it's going to show me all the columns. Now it says, hey, titles required. So we'll just drop our cursor in there. And look, over here from the parse JSON, there's my title. What? Yes, right? The beauty of parse JSON is now all my collection column names show up over here. Also, keep your peepers on right now, right? You looking? Because when you add my title, I'm going to click on it, it automatically put this apply to each loop in. So the reason for that, right, there's my title, it worked, but it said, hey, when the parse JSON parsed, I saw that you were going to give me a table or an array. So that means one or more records. So I'm going to have to loop through all those records. So if you pass me two records, which is what we're going to pass it, then it's going to run this create item step two times. When I passed it 100 records earlier, it passed it in here and it had to run 100 times. So just keep that in mind that, you know, this automatically happened, no big deal. And so then we go down here to first name and we post in my FN. That's it folks, right? You could fill in all the rest of the fields, do whatever you want to do. You could fix up things, you can send emails, whatever you want. But at this point, this will do what we need, which is bulk add all the items that we send over from um, Power Apps. So we'll say save here. So then after a second, it saves. So then now what you need to do is switch back over here to Power Apps. And so it's very confused at this point, right? So what you really want to do is now you need to click here and say refresh. Because what happened is we added that SharePoint step or your Dataverse step, whatever step you added, it probably needs has a different token uh, authentication thing. So you need to tell Power Apps to send that over as well. So that's why it has to reload it. And now that we've reloaded it, now, when we press and run this, not only will it create or uh, will it, you know, process, but it should create those two items for us. So if we go over here, we'll just say play. Oh, I guess we should make sure our collection has data in it, right? Our collection still populated. It is, right? So we got our two records. And so then we can just hit play, press the button. Bingo, bango, those have been sent. If we were to go back over here, we could look in here and say, hey, it ran five seconds ago. It took a whopping one second to run, even though it took like 10 seconds to load. And then if we go to apply to each, you can see it ran two times. And so the first time it created uh, the buddy record. And then the second time it created, it should be the Winston record, right? The Winston record. Perfect. I don't know why the interface looks weird the first time. There you go. That looks much better. Buddy. Okay. So that worked. And then obviously if we scrolled and found, we're not going to find them in my SharePoint list. We would now have those two records. So that's how you do a bulk update using Flow. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind, right? A, yes, this is super fast, but remember that just because the Flow, right, power, right, the reason it goes so fast, let's switch back over to this other screen. 
So the reason this went so fast is because this does not have to wait on the flow to actually finish, right? Like as soon as it sends flow, the data is like flow, here's all that data. As soon as that data lands in flow, Power Apps is done, Power Apps keeps going. Get your users back to work faster. But remember from a logic point of view, like that might take a few more seconds for the flow to work through your list and create all the data inside of SharePoint or Dataverse, wherever you're doing, right? So when you're doing that bulk method or bulk upload method there, bulk edit, bulk patching, bulk, whatever we call it. When you're doing that method, remember that the data won't be available right away. The second thing to remember is that, you know, this is not invalidating the data source, right? So we know that like when we do some type of patch and we edit, right, when we patched employees, that if there's a gallery in my app where it is currently showing employees, that gallery says, oh, employees has changed. Let me go refetch that data, right? So that's why you don't ever really have to think about your, your data when you use patch. When you do this method, what is not happening, right? We are not, like Power Apps doesn't know that employees is getting changed. Flow's changing it, but Power Apps doesn't. So if we had a gallery, those new records would not show up right away, right? So that can be a challenge for us. So this is one of those cases where you're allowed to use refresh, right? I'll point to it up there. There's a video that tells you don't ever use refresh. This is a case where if you wanted the Power App to now have the new data, you would have to refresh. Also, if you wanted the Power App not to go forward, you wanted the Power App to wait, then you'd go and edit your flow over here and you'd make the last step some type of respond so that way Power Apps would have to wait for it to get to the end, which kind of negates the whole idea we're doing here. But I want you to kind of, I feel like these are the questions you guys are going to ask in the comments later, right? Leave me comments down below. You're going to have some of these. I want to throw it out there and it gets you at least thinking that there, there are things, right? Yes, you'll have to do a refresh after this. Yes, if you want to wait, I'm not sure why you'd want to wait, but if you wanted to wait, then you'd have some type of, you know, you're here to edit and you'd create a new step and call it respond. All right, but it's not even going to open in a timely manner, so we're not going to get to see it. Oh, there we go, new step. So you just go here and then you would use respond. And so then when you responded to the Power App or Flow, then Power Apps would wait for the flow to finish before it moved on, which then you could do the refresh after that but then you've kind of negated the whole reason you did it. Whatever, I don't care. Okay, so there you go. So that's everything I've got for today. Uh, remember you can go to training.powerapps911.com and download that, uh, this, right? Also, um, you know, this idea came from, I did a, a session last week at the Microsoft Power Platform Conference for about a thousand people. Like we literally ran out of standing room in the room. It was crazy, it was so awesome to meet all of you. So high five if I got to meet you last week. Um, but so anyway, this was something new I taught at the conference last week and they all said, where's the video? So here's the video. This is for everyone that watched or was there last week and they asked for this. So you can thank all of them for this video. But yeah, questions, comments, ideas, other things you wanna see in the future, leave them below. Always try to respond. I know that I don't respond to all of them, but I try to. Yeah, and so with that, I'm gonna say thanks and have a great day. Hey, me again. Before you go, click on the subscribe button, right? Join the list of 100,000 plus people that have subscribed already. Or if you need any help, right? Check us out at Power Apps 91. We do big projects, little projects. We do training. We do everything and we can help you. Or if you want to see more videos, you probably do, then just click on the playlist above. Cool. Thanks and have a great day.